All right, what's up guys? So we are back. Uh, we took a little bit of time off. Um, just schedule's been crazy busy, but we're back to it now. So today we're gonna go through a full day of eating and then potentially an arm workout halfway through. So today is not a typical super high day, unfortunately, like most of you guys wanna see. Um, so on my high days, I'll do, which will normally be shoulders and chest, happen twice a week. Well, first one's a shoulder workout with a chest top up. Second workout, it's a chest workout with a shoulder top up. They're my weaker body parts, the ones I wanna bring up. So I'll have like crazy high super carbs on those days, probably up to about a thousand grams. Was in today, um, still a lot of food, but not quite up to the thousand mark, more around, I'd say about 650, 700. So this is a typical day I'll have. So on the super high day, um, I keep protein from sources like whey isolate, just because it takes up a lot of volume in your stomach when you're eating huge amounts of meat. Um, so something like an isolate is really handy, so you can keep the carbohydrates in. Um, that takes up a lot of room in your stomach, like I said, so you don't want to add extra meat. It can mess up your digestion, you feel sluggish. So today, we're not going to use the isolate, which is good anyway, because I've completely run out of that anyway. So we'll be heading to supplement needs after this to grab some. So the first meal is going to be 150 grams of cream of rice, and then we're going to have uh, six eggs, four whites, two whole eggs. Um, we've got four there, so hopefully we're going to pop out in the garden and the silkies should have paid their rent and we should get another two, three out of them, hopefully. So I'm going to go through the meal now, um, talk you through and then go through my morning supplement routine as well. We're coming out now. I think we've got some, I just sat on them. Oh, this is what you've got to put down as well. Put down a fake egg. It tricks them into laying them. Look at that. We've got two, so that's perfect. That's exactly how many we need. To be fair, a few of them have been slacking. <laughs> no, the silkies are just different types of chicken. So the ginger one, the two white ones and the black one, they're called silky chickens, and then the other ones are just normal chickens. Um, say for about 100, 120 grams, it's normally about, I'd say about 300 milliliters of water. Slightly more if you um, if you have a little bit extra. So I've got 150 in there, so I've probably got about maybe 400. Um, I didn't measure that, just completely eyeballed it. But it's slightly different, so when you put isolate with it, you actually want to dry it out a little bit. Because if you get it like the perfect consistency and then put isolate in it, it ends up making it all watery. So what I try to do, if I'm just making cream of rice, I'll have it try and get the perfect consistency by put it in for a minute, taking it out, stirring it, put it in for 30 seconds and keep repeating that till I get it perfect. But when I'm putting isolate in it, what I try to do is almost like dry it out and then when you put the isolate in, it kind of, um, it goes back to the original consistency before you, um, you know, before you over dry it out. Thai jasmine rice, you've got to get the Sainsbury's one because it seems to be the best with consistency and it's always a little bit more sticky so if you go to the shop and realize they're all sold out it's probably because i bought about 15 20 boxes it's virtually a whole packet and then we'll split the rice into three and that's 150 grams 150 grams of dry weight rice per meal this one's a trick as well. You always put a little bit of less water in with the jasmine rice to get it all sticky. Otherwise it goes all soggy. Right, so first meal, we've got three egg whites, three whole eggs. I got that wrong earlier, I said two whole eggs. There's actually three whole eggs. We've got 150 grams of cream of rice. We've got the consistency pretty perfect in that. Not too bad. And then we've got a morning uh, supplement stack. So we've got liver stack, obviously for your liver. Kidneys and blood pressure for obviously kidneys and blood pressure and CV stack, which is for your heart and uh, cholesterol. So three of those, four of those, 
four of those, one of these, and one of the vitamin D3 and K2. Um, I actually repeat this, especially the um, advanced health stack, I'll repeat this again before I go to bed because the dose is split into two, so we'll do another four of those at night, four of those, and another three, and that's the total dose. So we're on to the pre-workout meal. Now I like to have this meal about, around about an hour and a half before I train. It's quite a heavy meal, especially being with the red meat. So I kind of leave it about an hour and a half, two hours before I train, to make sure it's fully digested. So when I'm training, the blood actually goes to my muscles and it's not stuck in my stomach. I'm still trying to digest the food. So we've got 150 grams of dry weight jasmine rice, 250 grams of grass fed beef, um, that's dry weight as well, well, uncooked weight rather. Then we've got 20 grams of dark chocolate, which is about two squares. And then I'll put that down with another 200 grams of pineapple as well, which I'll chop up in a minute. So like I said, this is a standard pre-workout meal for me. A lot of people don't like beef pre-workout because it's, um, like I said, it's quite heavy in the stomach, but I never have any issues digesting red meat. I'm always pretty good with it. So uh, if it's not broke, you know, don't try and fix it. So. This is what I'll do. Typically, if I do have a really high carb day, I'm adding stuff in like bagels and cereal bars. I will reduce the protein down a little bit. Dogs get mad. Uh, we will reduce the protein down a little bit and have cream of rice and maybe like a whey ice little something just so I can have more volume to carbs. Like so So we're just heading off to Supple at Needs headquarters. Uh, I'm going to pick up my monthly stack. I've pretty much run out of everything, uh, especially isolate, uh, some car powders. Need to get some creatine, um, some mega threes. Just basically what I would get uh, kind of every month on an order. Uh, it's so handy for me because the, the actual headquarters is about five minutes from my house. Less than that, like a two minute drive. So I was going to go over there, go through a few products. Um, some of the new flavors we got in the Way Isolate, which is a caramel biscuit flavor, which is absolutely insane. Um, it's been getting a lot of hype recently. So go out there, pick up a load of bits, and then head off to the gym. Okay, so what we've picked, we've got inch workout wise, we've got inch workout EAAs. Again, peach tea is my favorite flavor. I did go for fruit splash last time, it's a bit of a mix up, but I always work back to the peach tea. And that'll stack with Electrite Plus. Now, Cola Rush is my favorite flavor, and you wouldn't think it goes with peach tea, but it does go really well. Um, so that'll be inch workout. So we'll have 25 grams of entry EAA plus inch workout. Then we've got 10 grams of electrolytes, 30 to 50 grams of car plus, depending on what the training. Uh, bigger muscle groups like back and legs probably requires a bit more, so about 50 grams of carbs there. So that is the intra workout, and along with the intra workout, we've got some creative monohydrate, like I said, one of the most researched uh, supplements on the market. All the proven benefits there so 10 grams intra workout, 10 grams post, then glutamine, 10 grams intra workout, 10 grams post. Uh, great for aiding digestion. I'll also have some of that in the morning as well. So that's the intra workout stack. Now, as, like I said, some of the days I'm pushing up to like a thousand grams of carbs, I need all the help I can get with that. So the supplement GDA stack, um, Glucox, I've done many posts about that, about how good the product is. Um, so I use this three capsules before each meal. I won't overuse it, so I won't do it like every meal on a high carb day, because you'll go for a tub in like two, three days. So I'll do it my first meal, pre-workout meal, and then my post-workout meal, and then the same with Burberry and Butler, and have one capsule of that. So. Those two stack together, keeping my insulin sensitivity good. Then as far as health products, I've already got vitamin D3 K2. I've already got some multivitamins back of mine. I've already got the advanced health stack, which is the kidney stack, the liver stack, and the CV stack, which is an absolute must have if you're on cycle, if you're an enhanced bodybuilder. Protein wise, we've got ISO Pure. Like I said, the uh, new caramel biscuit flavor is an absolute winner. Um, it's been flying off the shelves. I prefer this as a standalone. Like I said, I'll have it post-workout, so I'll only have one shake a day. Um, if I'm mixing it with cream of rice or uh, something like oats or something, or even cereal, then I'll chuck it in with the um, chocolate brownie flavor because it tends to go a little bit better. So that's a standalone. 
and then these two which I'll mix up with meals. And like I said, these are also serve a great purpose on high carbohydrate days, like I say, if I've got, I haven't got a massive amount of room in my stomach for lots of protein, lots of meat, so what I'll do is I'll replace a lot of the meat meals with ISO Pure. That way I have a lot more stomach, uh, room in my stomach for carbs, and I can get to about 1,000 grams of carbs without impacting my digestion too much. But I try and push the meat as well as the sort of high, high rice, high cream of rice, oats, etc. I end up bloated, I end up, feel sick, and I can't even make it to the end of the meal. So these serve a great purpose for that, and they're probably one of the highest percentage of ice that you'll get on the market too. Right, so we're back in primitive gym. We're gonna hit some arms today. Arms is a slightly weaker body part for me. I'm still struggling with some tendonitis issues with biceps and triceps, so we're not really gonna have any structure. I never do with arms, so we kind of get warmed up, go for the pump, probably hit about four exercises for biceps, four for triceps, um, three working sets. Like I said, to be honest, we haven't got a clue what we're gonna do. We don't know what weight we're gonna use because this is all based on feeling today. Like I said, I don't wanna do any movements that aggravate it and uh, make my injuries worse. So Cal's gonna be throwing a few exercises in there. Yeah. Like I said, we still haven't got a fucking clue what we're gonna do, so we're just gonna go through it. Get a good pump and uh, hopefully chuck some cool intensity techniques in there. Make some giant super sets. Super high volume. Super high volume. Super heavyweight, maybe. <laughs> Who fuck knows, I don't know. But we're gonna chuck some giant sets in there, some drop sets. Uh, and basically just try and volumize the muscle. So most people know biceps and triceps get hit heavy with back and chest anyway. So with arms, I really don't think it's worth trying to overload the weight. You always come away with more injuries than the actual muscle gain's worth. So like I said, we're just gonna pump it up with as much blood as possible. And uh, yeah, just get some sick fucking pumped arms afterwards. Some cellular swelling. Cellular swelling, that's what we're doing. <laughs> back home so just boxed off an arm workout pretty successful workout I managed to do a couple of movements that I haven't been able to do in over six months like I said before because my tendonitis has been playing up so post-workout shake we have got supplement shaker 50 grams of carb plus uh, 50 grams of iso pure the caramel biscuit flavor like I said limited edition 10 grams of glutamine 10 grams of creatine so I'll put that down now. Usually I have this around about, probably about 25 half minutes, half an hour after the workout. Um, if I have an inch of workout shake, then normally I don't have it straight away. I don't want to flood too much uh, liquid in my system. I want to make sure I optimize digestion. So I have that in about five, 10 minutes. Then post-workout, we've got 150 grams of dry wet jasmine rice, 250 grams of free range chicken. I'll put that down with some Pull out the stack here, some glue cocks, and I've got Burberry in there somewhere, and some Burberry. So that'll be post workout. Then post post workout, pretty basic, exact same meal again 150 grams of uh, dry weight jasmine rice, 250 grams of free range chicken. So I was having about sort of two, maybe three steak meals a day, but again, towards the end, I started to get. Um, my stomach start playing up a little bit, so I'm back down to one red meat a day. 
Um, sometimes I go up to two, depending on what my evening meal is. So my wife will cook up like a lasagna, a spaghetti bolognese, or kind of a whole family meal. So I don't be, I'm not overly strict like I used to be. So going back, well, for the last kind of 12 to 15 years, I've been so, sorry, just let the dog out. I've been very kind of, been very strict with um, exact macros and you know keeping track of everything, not having cheap meals if I do maybe once a week. But I was finding sort of long term it was hindering my progress. I wasn't able to get enough calories in. So now every evening I have a meal with my wife and my son, which is obviously a lot better for like social and um, you know it's, it's just nice to have a meal with your family. And the extra calories in the off season they're only going to benefit me more if anything. So that'll be my next meal, and then last meal will be a shake. So this is one of the Mega Mouse meals. It is Asian crispy beef with noodles that my wife put together. So this is meal number five. Like I say, every day when I come from work, um, I normally have a meal with the family. It's a little bit more sociable when you all eat the same meal. Um, I don't really like eating that type of where I spent about 15 years being overly strict and I found in the off seasons when I eat like a high carb, high protein meal. Um, you know, even if it's a home cooked one, like spaghetti bolognese, lasagna, etc. Um, I just seem to be less stressed than a grow bear, so this is something I've implemented now for probably the last two years and it's been paying dividends. So, like I said, it's always nice to sit down with the family. Um, today it's just me and my wife because my son is working. Uh, he's a little grafter, he's working till KFC till about 10 o'clock. So, I'm going to put this meal down and then we're going to go on to the next meal, which will be the last meal of the day, which will be a shake and some peanut butter. So, last meal of the day. We've got 50 grams of ISO pure caramel biscuit flavor, 40 grams of peanut butter, and like I said before, it's all blended to a shake because it's a lot easier to sit in the stomach before you go to bed. Don't want anything too heavy and disrupt any sleep. Chuck it in the bodybuilder's best friend, the blender. 